Metroid was a series that stood apart from the Marios and the Zeldas following its release on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Taking clear inspiration from 1979's Alien, Nintendo broke away from their colourful games, creating a desolate and isolating space experience. But the inspiration wasn't just in theme. Metroid, like Alien, also featured a strong female lead, bounty hunter Samus Aran. A skilled warrior, Samus came equipped with her power suit, a high-tech bit of kit that equipped her with an arsenal of attacks and unconventional abilities, perfect for combating alien monstrosities. Over time, Samus has changed a lot, with her power suit and physical appearance both going through a serious evolution. It's worth clarifying that she is commonly depicted in artwork and promotional footage in her various suit upgraded form, and while I'll make distinctions on some occasions, I will largely stick to her main designs from each game. This means less of a focus on power-ups like the gravity suit and various other upgrades. This is largely for my own sanity and I'd prefer to analyse the style rather than the power-up looks themselves. I'm also going to sack off her Federation Force appearance entirely as her main appearance is as a big ball. Samus might be one of the most subjective episodes yet as her design has differed significantly over the years but that won't stop me. Let's find out which Samus design I think truly is best. Now, while my studio is busy being destroyed, please don't forget to click the notification bell and like the video if you want to see more videos like these. The original Metroid released on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1986 and was Samus's debut. Her design here is kind of what you'd expect from 80s sci-fi. It reminds me of something you might find in a classic movie or TV series. Her design is made up of oranges, reds and greens primarily, though this is dependent on what region's artwork you're looking at. The power suit itself used angular shapes, broad pointy shoulders and had a shiny finish that looked like it would be tough to break through. The gaps in key areas on the arms, legs and knees made it clear that this suit emphasised mobility. The design was established clearly here, with a colour palette, pointed knee covers, helmet and plasma rifle becoming mainstays for the design going forward. The instruction booklet also featured cute renditions of the power suit, with little cartoon illustrations doing a solid job setting the tone for her in-game appearance. Her 8-bit sprite recreated this well given the technical limitations. Samus retained the height that was present in the artwork, and the slim design reflects the freedom of movement the power suit allows her. There are a few additions of colours in different places, i.e. the feet, but this is likely for visibility reasons. The game is dark, so it helps that Samus is clearly viewable by the player. The various suit upgrade acted as a colour swap for Samus, transforming the power suit into a pink variant. The big twist of this game was the reveal that Samus was actually a woman. The instruction booklet and promotional material had made no reference to this, and given that the big Nintendo females at the time were princesses and damsels in distress, it did come as a big shock. Her reveal came in the game's ending, as she removed her helmet to reveal long brunette hair and a hilariously undetailed pixelated face. If you were a horn dog teenager at the time, you could also replay the game to try and get a better time, as this would reveal more and more of Samus's female form the quicker you beat the game. If only the world was so innocent in the modern day. A cheat code also allowed you to play as Samus out of the power suit too, but while she retained the pink boots and leotard from the game's ending, her hair was strangely coloured green. While her human designs would be redefined over the years, the green hair made its only appearance here and it's a bit of a jarring addition. Metroid 2 would follow the first game in 1991, releasing for Nintendo's popular Game Boy handheld. From the get-go, the box art for the game featured a new look for Samus, which added a lot to the design previously established. The colour palette became a bit more advanced, moving away from the greens in favour of darker guns and darker subsections of the suit. Yellow was now also a key colour that stood out amongst the red and orange. The biggest change was the new large rounded shoulders, which I will dive into more in a moment. In game, Samus's sprite is a tremendous leap forward from what was presented in the previous game, featuring a taller, less compacted sprite that included the finer details of the character. When compared side by side, this is an incredibly accurate scaling down of how Samus had looked in the previous game. But while this was more advanced, the colour limitations of the Game Boy left a problem. 
how would the Varia suit upgrade be noticeable without a pink colour swap? The answer was an overhaul of the design entirely, with the new larger shoulders becoming a staple of Samus's design going forward. The game's ending also showed off Samus out of her suit, though this time around she had a face that featured a few more pixels. Appearing in her vest and underwear, this was a clear nod to the ending of the first Alien movie and the iconic look of Ellen Ripley. It's a really cool inclusion in my eyes that symbolises the inspiration the series had on the game. In 1994, Samus made her next appearance on the Super Nintendo in the aptly named Super Metroid. The artwork featured here is very similar to Metroid 2, though the game manual and box art focuses more on the various suit. The design looks a bit bulkier to me, with the large frame and shoulders especially looking like a broad muscular body type, perhaps again to throw off newcomers into thinking she was a man. Samus's sprite saw a clear upgrade yet again, with the level of detail now really reflecting her look in the promotional artwork. The in-game differences between the original power suit and the various suit were really apparent here, as the colour palettes had so much more to them. Samus's death animation in this game saw her power suit fade away and give a glimpse of the female form within. And thus, emerging teenagers would choose to die intentionally over and over again. This inclusion was a constant reminder that Samus was not who you might think she was at first glance, and the death animation would become a staple for the series going forward. The end screen, of course, again gave the world another look at her out of her suit. Here you could really see a lot more detail to Samus than you had done before. She was clearly in great shape, with ripped abs and a muscular frame, which would make sense given the adventure she's been on and the power suit she's been carrying around. She's got a bit of a grungy style to her, with the frizzy hair and the black bangle. It's been said on record that this rendition of Samus was based on actor Kim Basinger. It's not a half bad depiction of her either. While there was no Metroid game officially released for the Nintendo 64, 1999 did see Samus debut in the first ever Super Smash Bros game. The fighting game didn't really make any changes to Samus' design, but the model that was presented was a clear attempt at bringing the previous design from Super Metroid into the new era of polygons and blocky 3D graphics. I feel like they did a good job of translating this look over. The more interesting note from this game for me was in the promotional art. Smash Bros. 64 featured a unique series of cartoon-like depictions of many famous Nintendo characters. In Samus's case, this largely meant her features were exaggerated and her proportions were made less realistic. I guess this is as close as we'll come to getting a Toon Samus. Excluding Federation Force, of course. I still refuse to mention it, though I guess I am technically mentioning it now. Samus returned to handhelds in 2002, making her debut on the Game Boy Advance with Metroid Fusion, and the title was a clue to the drastic change her design would go through this time. The prologue to Fusion saw Samus combine with the X Parasite, an alien life form which infected both her and her power suit. The result of this combination leaves Samus in a hospital bed with the infected parts of her suit forcibly removed. The orange colours, large shoulder pads and exterior sections are all removed, leaving behind a smoother looking blue material. The excess of blue, the curved features and the new fin like spikes on Samus's arms really hammer in the new alien presence in this design. In the gameplay itself, Samus's original sprite shares a lot of similarities with her Super Metroid design, though like the game's artwork, once the X Parasite has its way, parts of this original sprite are stripped away to make this new look for Samus. I like drastic change a lot in series like this, and it's nice to see experimentation with established designs. I think Fusion does a very good job of throwing a new coat of paint at Samus, and this really helps this game stand apart with its own unique identity. Out of her power suit, Samus would also forego a massive change from the previous game. In a major departure from the previous Kim Basinger inspired look, Samus's death animation gives a preview of the new design we will find featured in the game's ending. Samus now had long, bleach blonde hair and went through a noticeable body change, looking slimmer as opposed to ripped. She basically went from being inspired by an actor in action films to being a fully fledged anime waifu. This may have just been them going with trends and moving away from what was popular in the 90s, but it felt like a distinct choice to make the Samus underneath the suit look as feminine as possible. 
In 2004, Nintendo decided to revisit the original Metroid, creating a fully-fledged remake, again for the GBA. The original Metroid had been quite limited in terms of graphic style, and the follow-up games had moved quite far away from Samus' original look. Metroid Zero Mission feels like an attempt to give the game a more appropriate place within the rest of the series. The new design retained some traits from the original. The main artwork, for example, features a similar pose and shoulder shape, as well as featuring a simple colour palette. The design also featured a thicker line style and excessive use of shading, a much more modern take in regards to art style. Personally, I think that the shading is there to hone in the sense of mystery that surrounded the original title, and it does a good job presenting this on the cover of the game. During gameplay, the sprite is an authentic reimagining of the original as well, feeling like a mixture of Metroid and Super Metroid. As alluded to before, the power suit is now more of a yellow rather than orange, but there is a specific reason for this. The various suit power-up now turns Samus into a shade of orange that better reflects her designs in later games, which is a nice little retcon that I can get behind. The game's title Zero Mission didn't just apply to the fact that this was an origin story. This game also featured the first appearance of Zero Suit Samus. This was a new design reserved for the rare moments where she would step outside of the power suit. Of course, this is notably present in Samus's death animation, as well as the end screens that we've also come to expect. Much like in Fusion, she can also be found in her hot pants. This blue skin tight outfit with the newly established ponytail represented the new design of Samus on the GBA, and it felt like this game was the testing ground as to whether we'd see more of Samus out of her power armor. A pixelated version of this form would also appear in the game as a playable character, going far beyond the Justin Bailey cheat code of the original, Zero Suit Samus would be playable in a section of the game's story itself. Now, we've already mentioned 2002, but this year also featured the debut entry in Nintendo's 3D Metroid series, Metroid Prime. While these games would still feature a heavy focus on action and exploration, it was now in the form of a first-person shooter. This meant that Samus tended to only appear in cutscenes, the game's artwork, and occasionally in the reflection of her visor. Samus actually starts this game off in her various suit, and this does look similar to previous depictions, but with a slight number of changes. The GameCube was a much more powerful system, so finer details were added. This included further development of Samus' shoulders, which were even bigger, with extended ridges and small panels of LED light invisible between surfaces. Her chest piece also featured lighting, which emitted a similar green to the dual light spheres that could previously be found on her hands and legs. After the game's prologue, Samus loses the various suit, and we're given a look at her power suit once again. This design feels like a throwback to the designs from previous games, it's a slimmer design with less weight to it. The shoulders combine with the chest plate to create armour that to me at least is very reminiscent of some of the Saiyan looks from the Dragon Ball series. I'm probably the only one who thinks that. As the series developed, Samus would retain much of this design, though the shape of her visor would rotate inwards, creating a somewhat more aggressive expression for the suit. The design also appeared to get a bit cleaner over time as well, with the main renders of Samus looking a bit sleeker. Out of this suit though, the changes to Samus were really quite drastic. Prime 1 saw a face reveal similar to the classic games, which showed off a realistic looking Samus that reflected the art design of the game's world. However, following the release of the GBA titles, Samus took on a look that was clearly inspired by the anime style and Zero Suit Samus. This is especially jarring in Prime 2, but by the time 3 came around, the look was a bit more established and fitted in with the game's aesthetic a bit better. Ugh. Now for the one everyone hates. Metroid Other M hit the Nintendo Wii in 2010 and tried to take the series in a new direction. Featuring a mixture of 2D and 3D action, as well as being one of the most plot-heavy games cutscene-wise, Samus went through quite a lot of changes in this game though they might not be immediately noticeable to those that aren't massive fans of the franchise. Her abilities were no longer found in the world, instead unlocking as the plot progressed, and more importantly, Samus' characterization felt a little bit… off. But design-wise, the power suit in this game in its basic form was yellow from top to bottom. It kind of feels like some of the previous various suits from past titles, as it features the large rounded shoulders and the same abdominal style patterns. Well, there's a reason for that. 
and the various suit actually is this suit, unlocking itself as the plot progresses and when Samus is told that she is allowed to use it. While previous games featured the suit as a bulky and advanced battle armour, Other M represents it in a simpler and much thinner fashion, is far pointier and her chest plate protrudes in a triangular style shape. Personally I think this change largely comes from them trying to make a fast paced game and wanting a power suit that reflects that, but I don't think it's necessary. In an odd way it feels like they tried to make the suit itself more feminine, much like Zero Suit Samus in the past. Speaking of Zero Suit Samus, she's here too, more than ever in fact, as her suit can now revert to its Zero Suit form at will, and it seems to do so during Samus' weaker moments in the story. Notably, her feminine features have seen some… significant upgrades. Her face for example, it now features a beauty spot or a beauty mark depending on what you want to call it, clearly a feature intended to emphasise her beauty. Other changes to this design include Samus's shorter hair bangs and her platform style heels, a stark difference from the character's original concept art. Speaking of the heels, Samus seems to need them here, as the character appears to be much shorter than she had been previously. Now, earlier on I addressed Super Smash Bros 64 and Samus' appearance in that title. She of course has continued to stay on in that series and her designs have had some changes made to them along the way, often using a modified design from a recently released game. Super Smash Bros Melee on the GameCube, similar to the Nintendo 64 version, featured Samus in her Super Metroid Power Suit. It's a bit strange that they didn't try to bring in the Prime design here, but I guess they focus on building on the original and what they already had. Brawl went on to feature a similar design that would include some of the details of the suit that were present in Metroid Zero Mission and Fusion. Later entries, Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate, both use a modified version of the other M design. It's still sleek in places, but generally speaking it feels a bit bulkier and more like Samus's classic various suit. Brawl would also introduce Zero Suit Samus as a new playable character with her design and costume based off of Zero Mission. As the series would develop, she would gain her other M outfit and beauty spot whilst retaining the classic ponytail design. As alternate outfits, she also had her ending costumes from Fusion and Zero Mission. The biggest difference with these designs was the decision to give her stiletto style high heels, a feature that has never been present in any of the other games. In 2017, Nintendo released Return of Samus for the 3DS, and that's right, it was a remake of the original Metroid 2 that I discussed earlier in this video. Check out the box art for the original versus this new version of the classic design, and the changes are massively apparent. Samus's various suit got a modern overhaul to better reflect her appearances across the Metroid titles, with some key differences that I think really benefit this design. One big change lies with the lighting present in her visor, shoulders and suit, emitting an almost nuclear level of brightness. The suit also looks a bit more Tin Man-like, it's covered with a steel-like shiny texture, moving parts of the suit appear to now work on hinges, her shoes look more like armour, and the shoulders look like they now feature large engines powering them. Before obtaining this suit in-game, Samus does rock her power suit which looks very similar to the design that was established in Prime. Zero Suit Samus makes her presence known again in this title, though death animations and the game's endings reveal that while she has retained a similar outfit to other M, she is now back to her trademark hairstyle. There's a throwback to numerous other versions of Samus in these endings, which even include the Justin Bailey cheat code Samus from the original game. It doesn't look any more right on a more powerful platform. That's all of the designs I'm going to look at today, and it's a really tough choice as to which one I think is the best. If I was going to go purely from a power suit perspective, I think I'd go with Prime. It's a physically imposing design that presents Samus with a serious level of realism, but I think complements these series of games perfectly. Outside of the armour though, I think this is where the design falls short. As a full package, I think that the Samus from Super Metroid is the definitive Samus design. I'm a big fan of the sprite work present in the game, and considering the year it released in, it still does a great job putting me into the shoes of a space warrior on an interesting alien planet. 
This design looks even better in other games such as Smash Bros 64 and Melee, with the changes made to the various suit having a clear impact on the design's evolution, with many signature features becoming mainstays in Samus's look. While I don't hate the Zero Suit Samus design that was established later in the series, I think that Samus works best as a kick-ass woman underneath the suit. Though we don't see as much of her as we would in later titles, I absolutely love the Kim Basinger inspired look. It makes perfect sense for her to be a tall, muscular woman, and I think this is a look that could have been explored much more in future games. Given that retro aesthetics are really in at the moment, I'd love to see a new 2D Metroid that really did draw on the look and feel of Alien. I think incorporating elements of this design into Zero Suit Samus could lead to a truly memorable Metroid experience. Of course, as ever, this is just my opinion. Let me know what you think below in the comments section and tell me which design you like best too. Tell me how wrong I am as well of course and let me know which characters you'd like to see covered next. At this time, I want to say a massive thank you to my first set of patrons who are now supporting the channel on a monthly basis, with a special thanks to Top Hat Gaming Man who is supporting me in the highest tier of donations. If you would like to see your name in the credits too, as well as receiving other perks, please consider joining me on Patreon. Besides subscribing, it's the best way you can help me to continue to put out videos like these. Cheers.